I so, think by now it's almost automatic that you do that. Yeah. So I mean, it, so the new script. So new script is this. I, um, I mean, it it is a shell program that I have that, that I have in my tilde bin that just creates a new file, creates a new template script. So foo, right? New script foo, wrote foo, and then foo has got my template in it. And I always put, I I put my I use a main. And I use get opt. Those are some other things that, um, yeah. So get opt is is phenomenal for parsing yeah. options. Yeah. And there's another one called I think it's get ops. It's actually a shell built-in. I really prefer the usage semantics of get opt to get ops so much that I don't really even remember what it's called. But um, get opt does incur a fork. It is an external program, but it's worth it. Um, so yeah, so this basically, look, this is how you end up, this is how that stanza looks like. You end up using get opt and then you walk through your options and then you have some left over. Um, programs take arguments. If you're writing a shell script that you just expect to, you know, it, take options and do things like that, use get opt. It's wonderful. Um, it allows you to, you know, more sanely add later on. Then adding another program, and then adding another argument, or adding another shell variable that you're going to forget about, it just gets messy. Try to write a program from the start; you'll think yourself later. Um, let's see functions. Um, I think that this was to show use use functions, um, and let's see, and use. And there's two ways that you can do things um, to kind of use return values out of functions. One is you can write the values to standard out. That's in like in greeting. Um, in in greeting, I, I prefer the second because it doesn't incur a fork. So yeah, we had to, use, to to get the output of that function up there. In greeting on line 13, I did greeting with S Moser and I took the standard output of it and then write it. So that was a that was a fork. The shell forked, invoked that thing, took its standard out, and put it in my buffer. And the second one, though, it does not include a fork, so it's probably that little simple. That little simple thing is probably on the order of a thousand times faster than the first one. You just, if if you're looking to avoid fork, and for a lot of things you can. I I don't. A lot of people prefer or do all all of it in place. The first form where you write something to standard out, and you you use the shell to capture the output. I don't. I try to avoid that work now. Um, but use functions for all the reasons that you would use functions in a programming language. It, you know, they're reusable. They take parameters. That they're wonderful. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, that was a, that's a bad link. Declare. Um, <coughs> declare variables. If you don't declare variables, um, yeah, in, in a shell, you, you're probably familiar that basically all your environment variables that exist become uh, variables, right? So the you know dollar sign home represents your slash home slash smoser and log name there would be smoser and those are just handed to you from the environment. Um, that's good. For a lot of reasons, it's bad in others. Um, if you see, if you see the bug here. Um, I, I didn't initialize the very the is <coughs> root value to false, or I didn't set it in this here not root. And then later on, I look at it. Um, well, if I run that program, either intentionally or unintentionally, with intentionally or unintentionally with is root true in my environment, which is what ENV does, it just adds it to my environment, 
Um, now it says, you know, that first stanza said you're not root, but then later on I checked the value of is root and I found out that I am. So the fact that you get a bunch of environment of, of variables declared in your in your programming language is nice at first, but it's really dangerous. And you know, it's kind of like using an initialized variable in C. You know, it you it's a very easy mistake to make, and you just need to be careful that you declare your variables and set them to yeah, set them to the default values. Is there a, a switch or anything you can turn on to check that? Like Pro has scripts. You can. Script. There is so one. I'll warn you if you're using um, variables. There, there is something you can tell it to never let you reference uninitialized variables. Okay. Um, yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, Something it's all the, like, uh, I don't do it because it's painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you I actually up. used it sometimes, uh, like, you know, it's been, uh, like, when I was uh, using it uh, continuously for about two years. Yeah. So then I had to uh, find something on that, but yeah. I hardly uh, recollect. So, would you uh, emphasize upon that, like, uh, what, what's the keyword I got to? It's pride. Like, I mean, I need to make a declaration, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, declare. Yeah. And you can declare. Um, that, that makes it an array. Yeah. Um, so you can, but there is a, yeah, you, there is a, uh, there's something in the, in, Bash and shell that you can. I think it may only be bash, though. It may not be possible that you can say basically exit on attempt to use an uninitialized variable. I've tried it before. It's just kind of painful. And I, yeah, that's kind of I guess like compiling with uh, you know minus w pedantic or that sort of thing. It's you, it, it, it's kind of over the top, but yeah, it is. It's there and it's a it's a useful tool. Um, let's see. Um, set minus F is another thing. I, I think probably more than anything else that kind of when I look at somebody's shell code, the most common issue comes from this sort of logic, um, where you end up getting well set minus F. Enable or let's see, set plus f as the default. That um, means that you get shell expansion of variables, which I mean is what you use all the time when you use wonderful things like you know for a in star. Yeah, that's shell expansion of variables, right? And that's really nice. But um, but that that expansion. When it get when it comes into play when you don't want it to is so extremely painful and has so um, many unexpected results when when you do something like I think that'll do it right right did I get double yeah there. So this first, yeah, so when you're debugging a shell script, and I, yeah, like as I'm walking, watching it, it doesn't even make any sense, right? But for A and star, do echo A. Well, there's actually a file named star. So the first file was A, was star, and then when I said echo star, that one shell expanded past the entire line. And then I went through the rest of them one by one. So you see such odd things, and to debug stuff like that is, is horrendous. Um, so, so if you did a set minus f right now. Yeah, um, didn't I do that same over. thing? Set plus f. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that minus zero, minus f oh, right. do the expansion. Yeah. Right? Now I have sanity. Yeah. Um, ah. So in general, I most of the time try to operate with set minus f with disable bash shell or shell expansion That's, and uh, enable it when you need it. Is that shell expansion or file clubbing? Uh, file clubbing. Um, yeah, it, does that do tilde 2? Let's see. No, so tilde is, a, so it's not 
half name expense, yeah, file bobbing. But it also would do, yeah, I mean, you can just get a lot of weird stuff. And then if you've got, you know, file names with semicolons or carriage returns or, the, it just gets really ugly. And so, in general, yeah, so I, there's, there's that. And then in general, just always quote variables. Because I would have been safe also if I had done this. also same. And so a lot of times, yeah. most of the time when you see programs issue problems in people's programs, they're either set minus F, <laughs> shell expansion, got them, or um, they need more quotes. You read the Bash advanced shit scripting handbook and like it throughout it says use more quotes. That's generally the problem. Um, as I said before, I like get opt Negative logic is something that if you, I don't know if that's really a great term for it, but um, if, you're, if you're trying to program defensively, I guess, look at those two programs. One of them, let's see. Yeah, one of them takes a, the happy path if it's not equal to one, and one takes it if it's equal to one. And when you call it with, if you give it some variable that is not a digit, it's doing digit comparison, then the if bracket will fail and take the negative path. So in this case, yeah, that first one's broken, not because of any reason other than it got bad input. But you take the yep number, number was one path here, show it. Yeah, but and that would have fixed that, but essentially if the way that it works